What if I told you there were only four core types of baselines, only four kinds of baselines you'd ever have to learn, only four kinds you'd ever have to create? Would that make things easier for you? Hi, I'm Luke McIntosh from becomeabasis.com and in this lesson you'll learn the four types, but most importantly you'll discover what they're used for and where you can use them yourself. This is going to be a ton of fun. Playing bass lines, writing bass lines, there are tons of ways to do it. But when you break it all down, the overwhelming majority of lines can be put into four broad categories. They start off being kind of very rigid and formulaic in the type ones, and get more and more organic and less formulaic as we go down to our type fours. And as you go from the type ones to the type fours though, they do get a bit tricky to create, and usually a little bit tricky to play as well. The first type of bass line, the Type 1, I'm sure you've heard hundreds, maybe even thousands of these uh, before. I call these monorhythmic chord followers, and they're super, super simple. All they are is primarily one kind of rhythm, obviously mono meaning one, and that one rhythm just follows the chords. Usually the rhythm is a quarter note or an eighth note, and the notes are usually the root. For example, if the chord was a B and the rhythm was an eighth note, you'd simply pay, play f uh, eight Bs per bar and that would be the bass line, like this. Yeah? Now this might seem simple, almost too simple, <laughs> but this exact bass line is what happens at the start of ACDC's Thunderstruck. The guitars are doing their thing, the drums are playing, and the bass is playing this. It's totally simple but it works super well. It drives the song along without getting in the way of the other instruments or the vocals, and it doesn't distract from the song. What about an example that uses quarter notes instead? Well, if we had a chord progression uh, C sharp minor, E major, B major, and A major, and we had a quarter note pulse that we wanted to play, that'd sound like this. Now again, this might sound simple, but it's actually the bass line from One Republic's Counting Stars. It's an insanely popular song with a very simple monorhythmic bass line that just follows the chords. Your bass lines don't have to be complicated for them to be effective. For some more examples of monorhythmic chord following bass lines, you could check out Stevie Wonder's Superstition, it's mostly quarter notes. Uh, also Adele's Rolling in the Deep or The Police's Every Breath You Take, both mostly playing eighth notes and just following the chords. Could not be simpler. So the next question you're probably asking is when do you use this kind of type 1 bass line? What's it good for? That's a great question. Uh, these bass lines are perfect for when you want to do uh, one of two things. Number one, you really want to drive the band and give a sense of kind of forward momentum. Uh, you can even, even play around with the weight and strength of the notes to make them feel slightly different. For a, a super bouncy version of this kind of bass line, check out Sly and the Family Stone's Everyday People. Larry Graham on that track has just about the bounciest eighth notes in history. It's incredible. <laughs> But when, uh, but the whole song, he sticks to that one rhythm. In fact, the whole song is just one note. One note! <laughs> uh, the second thing you can do with this kind of bass line is hypnotize people. Something that's so repetitive can really hook your audience, and this kind of hypnotizing effect works best when the energy is a little bit lower. Check out the bass line to U2's With or Without You. It's super relaxed and a prime example of a monorhythmic chord following bass line with that kind of hypnotizing feel. The Type 2 bass line is similar to the Type 1 in that they mostly follow the roots. The key difference here is that they follow the rhythm of the bass drum rather than just picking one rhythm and kind of running with it. Obviously there is going to be some crossover between these two types and there's nothing wrong with that at all. These are the kind of bass lines that are again very functional and serve the music. Uh, if you had a chord progression uh, that was G, D and C and the drummer was playing uh, this then you'd end up with a bass line that sounded something like this. Yeah? Now, again, do you recognize this one? This is actually the bass line from uh, Take It Easy by Eagles. This is just root notes following the bass drum pattern. This approach also works very well with dance-based music. So if you check out Casey and the Sunshine Band's Shake Your Booty, the drums sound something like this. Yeah? 
boom, 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 with the bass. Again, just following that kick drum pattern along with the chords. Now it's kind of rare to find a whole song where the bass drum and bass play exactly together for the whole song. It just takes one person to add in a little fill or play a note twice and it's not exactly the same. But again, that's fine. You can begin with this approach and then branch out from there. So when should you use a type 2 bass line? This is a really good one if you really want a song to settle and you really want to lock in with your drummer. These bass lines are great because they tie together the harmony, the roots of the chords, and the rhythm that comes from the kick drum. For some more examples, uh, check out the verses to Earth, Wind and Fire's Shining Star or Jason Mraz's I'm Yours. Both largely take this approach. They're not overly glamorous, they're usually quite simple bass lines that serve the song they're in perfectly. Type 3 are your bass lines that mimic other parts of the song. The bass and some other instrument will be playing the exact same thing, although probably in different octaves. These are super, super common in rock, uh, punk, metal music. Anytime you see a guitar player playing the exact same thing as a bass, it's one of these Type 3 bass lines. It doesn't have to be a guitar though, it can be anything, a piano, a vocal line, a banjo. <laughs> Anytime the bass is playing something, uh, the same thing as another instrument. Now, uh, does this sound familiar to you? Uh. Yeah? It's the bass line to Jackson 5's uh, I Want You Back. But if you listen closely to the recording, you'll hear the piano playing the same thing as the bass during the verses. Yeah? At these points in the song, it's a type 3 bass line. What about this one? Absolutely classic song. Cream's Sunshine of Your Love. And for a lot of the song, the bass and the guitar are playing the exact same thing. Now, in all these examples, I wouldn't be able to tell you whether the bass player came up with the ideas first or it was someone else, but they definitely sounded better when there was more than one instrument playing that same idea. So when should you use a Type 3 bass line? Well, anytime you want to make something that's already there feel powerful, yeah? Having the bass in the low register play something that's also being played up higher is going to sound, um, feel, uh, sorry, it's going to make it sound and feel super fat, super powerful. That's why so much rock, punk and metal music does this, to make everything seem bigger and thicker and fatter. Uh, the one caveat here is there has to be something there for you to reinforce. Uh, if there's not, then you can't really mimic anything, right? Uh, for some more examples uh, of this kind of bass line, check out Rush's YYZ, uh, the intro and verses to Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer, or Pink Floyd's Money. All great examples of the bass playing along with another instrument. Type 4, the final line type, and possibly the most fun and most interesting, is when the bass is its own melodic line, independent of everything else. Yeah? Nobody's playing the same thing as the bass. A lot of uh, the most kind of iconic bass lines come out of this type because they have to be memorable and they have to be melodic. Now have you heard this one? Yeah? If you know the song, then you don't need to hear any more of it. You know it's The Clash's London Calling. The bass is the only instrument that plays that line and it's one of the big hooks in the song. That's what makes these kind of uh, lines so fun to play and satisfying to write. What about this one? Any Red Hot Chili Peppers fan knows instantly that it's Give It Away. Tons of uh, bass lines by Flea are these Type 4 bass lines, these independent melodic lines. Lots of iconic bass players made their name by creating these kind of lines. Uh, the big one that comes to mind is James Jameson. Pretty much everything that guy played was an independent melodic bass line and they sound amazing. The trick with this kind of bass line is that it has to be functional as well as sound cool. 
the line has to outline the harmony as well as be pretty in its own right. Otherwise, it's just kind of a waste, right? Both the clash example and the flea example, they both outline the chords. So, where can you use this type of bass line? You use a type 4 independent melodic bass line when there's some space for you in the mix where you can inject your own personality. If you're playing a song that's super busy and you're trying to play these intricate melodic bass lines, chances are the song isn't going to work. It may even completely fall apart. Think about the two examples we had so far. In London Calling, the guitar is just playing chords on the beats and the drums are quite simple. There's space there for the bass to shine through. Uh, in the Chili Peppers example, listen to the track. There's only drums, guitar, which is playing kind of riffy stuff up high. There's a ton of space uh, that Flea could fill, and so he does it by playing that kind of melodic line. Could he just have played a Type 2 line, playing the same rhythm as the bass drum on the root? Sure, he could have. But the actual bass line sounds way cooler than a Type 2 would have in the same situation. For some more examples of these Type 4 bass lines, check out anything James Jameson ever did. <laughs> uh, check out the verses to uh, Eddie Floyd's Knock on Wood or the verses to The Beatles Come Together. They're all great examples of super melodic bass lines. By the way, all of these different types can be mixed together in a single line. In fact, very few bass lines are exclusively one type. Most blend at least two types. For example, a jazz walking bass line is monorhythmic and outlines the chords, which makes it a type 1, but it's also an independent melodic bass line. It's a blend of both. Same with bass lines like uh, Billie Jean. It's only eight, eighth notes and outlines the harmony, but no one else is playing that kind of uh, that line, are they? So it's an independent melodic line. Some bass lines might start out as independent lines only to have another instrument join in uh, on, on in that line later on. For example, in uh, Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher, uh, the bass starts the song off. Yeah, but by the end of the song, the horns start playing fragments of that line. Yeah, so it turns into a kind of hybrid type 4, type 3 bass line. Now, type 1 mixed with type 3 is also a common combination. Lots of punk and metal music uses this, where they'll be playing a type 1 line, but with multiple instruments. Think about uh, like Blink-182's uh, All the Small Things. It's a type 1 line, straight 8th notes playing the chords, but the guitar plays the exact same thing, so it's also a type 3 bass line. So you see, very few bass lines are exclusively one type or another, but approaching them in this way should be a great way for you to get ideas for your own bass lines. Now if you want all the tabs for the bass lines that I've used as examples in this video, as well as my analysis of why they work so well, I'd love to give them to you. Learning from great bass lines is probably the single best way to make your own lines better and to take them to the next level. So to get the tabs, plus my analysis of them, simply click the link in the description, sign up on that page, and I'll send them directly to your inbox. Totally free. My gift to you. To recap really quickly though, you learnt the only four types of bass lines you'd ever need to know or create. Type 1 was the monorhythmic chord follower, which was great for pushing the song along or kind of hypnotizing your audience. Type 2 was roots played in the rhythm of the bass drum, which was amazing for having a song settle and really locking in with the drummer. Type 3 was where the bass was playing the same thing as another instrument, which, which made whatever you were doing feel so much bigger, so much more powerful. Finally, your Type 4 bass lines were your independent melodic lines, which were great for when there was some space for you to inject your personality into the mix. You also learned that almost all bass lines were a mix of the four different types. Thank you so much for watching. This has been super fun for me. I hope it has been for you too. My name is Luke McIntosh from becomeabassist.com. Good luck with the lesson and happy playing.